jetzt die aktuelle 51 der Welt. Herzlich willkommen dem Maximum Josh Payne! Wir kommen zu einem Moment, auf den viele, viele von euch gewartet haben. Denn jetzt wartet die Nummer 2 der Welt, der WM-Finalist von 2014, der UK Open Champion von 2017, Ladies and Gentlemen aus Schottland, Snakebite, Peter Wright! It has been a treat so far today at the German Darts Grand Prix. Some monstrous stuff from some of the biggest names in the game. And Michael Smith putting in the highest average that we have seen so far this weekend. 105.38, a staggering 7 180s in just eight legs of darts, blowing Chris Doby away and out of the tournament. Peter Snake by right, the world number two, the highest ranked player we've seen so far this weekend, about to get his campaign underway, looking to continue the good form he showed in Leverkusen last weekend. Could well have won the title, Mr. a dart to do so against MVG in the final. It's a look that he was sporting in terms of the clothing on Thursday night in the Premier League because his luggage has only just turned up. He does have the darts that he wanted, that he has been throwing well with, but didn't have any of the hair products so he's found something to make it stick up but it's not quite the full Peter Wright experience tonight as he takes on Josh Payne looking for a place in the last 16 Chris Murphy alongside me Dan Dawson for Wright against Payne and there against Josh to throw first game on so there was a very late boost for Peter Wright to be handed his luggage and with it the darts that he's been performing well with in the last week and the darts that won him the UK Open last year should have won him the Asian Premier League last year too but he has been practicing with a different set for the last three hours. So he will have to adjust to these darts because the ones he was using, the same style of dart, but three grams heavier. 55. There is a, a slight problem. Well, it's not a massive problem with these darts. One of the points is bent, not once, but twice. 100. So it bends one way, then the other. So it's not ideal. If he just sticks the point on like a fingertip and then spins the dart round, you can actually see it's not centred. Now, it didn't stop him going through in a succession of ton Asian. averages last weekend, or indeed picking up a point from an unlikely position against Whitlock in the Premier League on Thursday. Yeah, he may still have work to do in the Premier League. Peter Ooh. Wright, when he... Plays, in, plays on judgment night on Thursday, although... His last match on, so he might not even have to throw a dart 100. before his survival is confirmed. It's the men that are competing in the next couple of games that will decide whether he has to or not. It's Michael Van Gerwen who takes on Mensah Sulevich, so you'd rather be in right shoes than the gentles for that one. Yeah, 140. Right rather odd position of wanting Michael Van Gerwen to do him a favour. Not that MVG has been particularly charitable to Peter Wright particularly. He's cost him hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds over the last few years. He has. Wright versus Daryl Gurney at the Echo Arena in Liverpool on Thursday night. But Peter Wright will be fully focused on this, the European Tour, where he is the main man, certainly as far as the fans are concerned. Yep. 
Single 16 for Josh Payne. Oh, 88. well. It's cost him a dart, a, a double for a leg, and Peter Wright could well leave himself vermensure here. He's not going to do that. 140. Josh Rigoire, 48. Yeah, on the first leg, Josh Payne. That's a start for Josh Payne. Second leg is Peter to throw first. Who met Game Peter on. Wright very, very recently indeed. Just a couple of weeks ago. We met at the Pro Tour event in Milton Keynes. Wright won 6-2. 108! He's got used to the dark now. Well, I did manage to sit Peter down on Thursday night to talk to him about what happened to him over the last few weeks. And he said, he confirmed my suspicions, that it's just this weird thing that he seems to get once a year where he has a spell where he, he just seems to forget how to throw. He just seems to lose the ability to throw it properly. He says it's like throwing with somebody else's arm. It's like throwing with my wrong arm. It, it just doesn't feel right. I thought he was going to say it was like throwing with somebody else's dart, but that wouldn't really affect no, Peter No, that wouldn't right, affect would him at all. 45. The now traditional German song during Peter Wright games of Du hast die Haare schön, you've got lovely hair. It's not quite as lovely as it normally is, to be fair. 100. Not quite as bright. Maybe this is a new thing. It's a Six. step up. Peter Wright doesn't have the hair done at all for the Pro Tour events, does he? It's just no. a bit of white fluff on the top of his head. Untreated. I'll tell you what, the fans here have been treated. Josh Payne thinking clearly there. He nearly piled in a tunnel, which would have been on a bogey number. 100. Came down for the 19s to make sure he's left a finish of some sort. Ninety-four. Joshua Guile, one hundred and sixty-seven. Leaves tops, and he is going to get a go at it to level this match up. Does have a win against Peter Wright? Does Josh Payne? Forty-three. So it's Here not forty. Wouldn't be a novel experience beating him, but it would be novel beating him in this surrounding. Well, he might get a little chance here. Swinton. Well, that was one of those examples where the dart was so close to the double that it didn't really help him. It's been plenty of big ton plus finishers this weekend. We're not going to see one right now. 56. Did you require 20? Well, it took him a little while, but he found his way there to get the first leg on the board, or his first leg on the board. And one of the standout things for Peter Wright last weekend was the finishing. I mean, particularly on the final day, uh, it, it was incredible. Well, there was that match where James Wade seemed to throw everything at him, but he was level to all of it. Uh, in the quarterfinals and the semi-finals, I think Peter Wright only missed three darts at doubles. And that's an extended format as well. Firing in his second maximum. Chris Doby in the crowd watching this one. Joe Wright misses snake bite. Uh, well. Some to go to catch up Michael Smith. 7 one is in his win against Chris Doby. The standout performance of the weekend so far. Averaged over 105 in that one. We have seen some Six. good ones. Keegan Brown inspired, as was Darren Webster. Three of the top six averages so far have been losing ones this weekend. 100. Dave Chisnell, Stephen Bunting and Nathan Aspinall. That was yesterday against Steve Lennon, who faces Michael Van Gerwen tonight. Right, looking to make his move and get a break of throw that he is going to need. And that leaves 1-2-1. One, one. One, seven, seven would be good here, Josh. 
Maguire, and the break chance has arrived for Snake Bikes. Level 17. Not found. Where would last as well? Might just have helped Josh Payne a little bit, have a little more hope here, and he's found the treble. Looks good. Looks inviting. Game shot the third leg. Josh Payne. And Josh Payne well, leads one more. First. Game on. One hundred and forty. It is Alan Tabham who awaits the winner of this one after the St Helens veteran overcame Kyle Anderson. 180! And we're not quite sure who it is Tabby's going to face because Josh Payne is giving this a heck of a go. That's his first maximum and puts pressure on the right throw. 43. And Peter Wright not near his brilliant best just yet. An opportunity here for Josh Payne. 60. Josh Payne has not qualified for any of the other European Tour events. Didn't qualify for the first one, hasn't qualified for three or four in Saarbrück and in Austria. So this is going to be his last crack on the Euro Tour for a little while. Certainly making a good fist of it right now, although he did have to survive a match dart against Michael Rastovitz. 84. Be giving while 118. We see Peter Wright trying to find the 60 when he's blocked part of it. And as I say, probably the best exponent of it in the world. Yeah, he's on the fourth leg. Well, he wasn't Peter left Wright. with too many options. There were options, just but that would be the favourable on. one in that situation. He does like a double 19 finish as well, Peter Wright, from time to time. 100. Nineteen PDT titles. The tally that Wright's racked up so far. Not bad going, is it? 100. Not for the length of time between them. Because Peter Wright's been around a long time, but he's really only been in the winning circle since what, 2012? 2013? Five or six years. Yeah. All those titles have come well. And what started out, as you might expect, what started out as an odd title here and there gradually became a little more regular and then last year it was a deluge of titles including the two big TV ones 131 German darts masters in the World Series but a real jewel in the crown for Peter Wright's career the UK Open title and he should have added 45. the Premier League yes he should and he won't thank us for reminding people of that but he missed six match darts didn't he to beat Michael Van Gerwen at the O2 he did. I mean, admittedly, he had survived a match dart or two from Phil Taylor in the semi-final, but he was in charge of that final with MVG. And looked to have been banishing those demons, having lost so many major finals to the world number one. And yet, so those demons came back to haunt him, perhaps. Well, Van Gogh, in, in his interview after that, said that would never happen to me, but fast forward... <laughs> the World Championship semi-final against Rob Cross. That's nice. And yeah, that on the fifth leg. is a break of throw for Peter Wright, who wrestles Seems control like of this time. We're going to see Michael Van Gerwen and Rob Cross in the last two matches of this evening. We've seen some fantastic performances tonight. The best may be yet to come. Yeah, tantalising prospect. 
I mean, in terms of the popularity of players, and it's no accident they've scheduled this as they have. Peter Wright, probably the most popular player in continental Europe. Mensur Sulevich, the greatest German-speaking dart player of all time, always very popular, particularly on the Euro Tour. Michael Van Gerwen, who, I mean, admittedly, he does get some pantomime booing, but the people are here to see the world number one. 180 number four for Peter Wright. I assume the man with the snake painted on the side of his head and various bits of metal shoved into his face is here to support Whoa. snake bite. May, may just be a weird coincidence, don't know. Be a big yellow class and fan. Could be. Might be a Jeffrey de Zvan. Ultra. Yeah, and Rob Cross. Rob Cross has become massively popular, hasn't it? You see the number of Rob Cross shirts no, around and how many when they're doing the walk-ons before play starts, how many people picking out Rob Cross as their favourite player. And it is the world's numbers one, two, and three in action tonight. Of course, Mensah Sulevich. Next up against Danny Noppert. Now, yesterday we were saying Noppert against Ratajski was going to be the best game of the day. Could have 83. been a rival for the worst. But it is another fantastic match in prospect, that isn't it? On paper, yes. 95. Well, Peter Wright right, just looks as if he's taken control of this tight. And he could open up a two leg gap here. Gets one at the outer ring instead of the ball. And yeah, he pins it. Six Double six nine six is there. Six Peter Wright, the world number two, two, has won three consecutive legs. Josh Payne. He is going to have to find some more gears because the level he's playing at at the minute is not enough. And that is exactly the last three legs, exactly what you want to do, isn't it? 15 darts on throw, 12 darts against. Yep. It means that you're forcing your opponent to throw 12 darters. And look, we've seen, you know, Darren Webster chucked three 12 darters back to back to back. We know Josh Payne could do it. But if he does do it, that's 100. averaging 125 for those three legs. You deserve those legs. You can do that. Josh Payne Six. has only been allowed three darts at a double in this match. One hundred. Well, he may well get more in this leg. Eighty-one. Joshua Boyer, one hundred and sixty-seven. He'd just like to leave himself poised because Peter Wright can hit hard from any position. Fifty-seven. That's not ideal. No, that does. You know, even a ton, a ton 40 here from Snake Bite leaves him a Shanghai finish. I don't think a ton's enough. Well, 21 after two darts certainly isn't enough. 41. So That's that does just take the pressure off Josh here. And he would just cut the gap to one leg. Double 16 the target. 94. Well, now the chance to properly apply some pressure. And this time he's going to do just that. 180! The token maximum. Uh, 16. Will it be simply a token? Okay, so on the seventh leg, Josh Payne. He think it's easy to throw well, first. Credit to Josh Even. Payne. Because having missed two, it must have started to get seeds of doubt creeping into his mind as he took aim at the last 100. one. 100. Knowing that Peter was poised. And I like 180. that one. He could have gone elsewhere if he wanted to. It wouldn't have really mattered. He'd have had a two darter anywhere. But it's getting the crowd going. They don't react to a, a 177 in the same way. No. Kirk Bevins does, but the crowd don't. 
Well, this is a real chance now for Josh Payne. When Peter Wright put together that run of three legs and looked to be in total control of this one, although that is a bit of a horror show, hands the initiative straight back to the world number two. I just looked at the way he threw, particularly the first dart in that visit, as if he knew how big that visit could have been, and it just forced him to try a little bit too hard. It's a fine balancing act, isn't it, in the game of darts? Staying relaxed, but also concentrated 81. at the same time. Mm. And, you know, he's, still, he's a young man, and even though he has had some significant... Yeah, big things happen in his career, winning a Pro Tour title, making a World Youth Final. He still doesn't have an enormous amount of experience, Josh Payne, in terms of big stage darts. In the last 16 of the Players' Championship Finals, that's a couple of years back when it was just one game he'd want to get there, before 160. they expanded the field to 64 players. Been at the UK Open, obviously played some Euro Tour without... Going really deep into the Joshua tournament. Wild, 152. A couple of big finishes helped him out against Michael Rastovitz yesterday. He took out a 160 and a 146, and he might have to do something similar here against Joshua Peter Wright in the closing Wild. stages of this game if he is going to turn it around. Might not have Joshua to. Wild. Peter Wright opened the door and invited Josh Payne in. He has got to take this chance. 18. Peter Wright, 40. In the big moment, Josh yeah, Payne has eight, been uh, unable to capitalise on the mistakes that Joshua Peter Wright. Game made on. in this match, and I'll tell you what, he's made more than he usually does. He has. He's only averaging 92. This is Six. kind of a regression for Peter Wright. So he thought that his run last week in Leverkusen was him announcing that he is back. And it's going to be the solid 9900 average Peter Wright pretty much every time he takes to the stage. It's not been like that from Snake Bite tonight. And Josh Payne, with his second maximum, keeps his hopes alive. Yeah, of course, there are the mitigating factors that we've mentioned around Peter Wright's darts not turning up until, what, half an hour before he went on stage? And he is a big practicer, Peter, isn't he? 140. One of the things that he changes his darts so much is because just to try and keep himself interested. He says, sometimes I'll practice one set of darts and then go and use another just because it, it tries to help him focus his mind. He's been so many hours and hours and hours hammering away at the board. 91. And he said he might have to take a big finish out. He's given himself the chance to do that. He's not going to have to take it out to win this leg. Sometimes you just need something to spark you into life. Just to let your opponent know how good you are. 74. 74. Well, it gets him down to a two data. But again, Peter Wright's in that position where he can apply the pressure. 180 to leave 39. No, he was going for it, I think. Again. 137. That's just as handy for Peter Wright because he's also a down to a two darter and one where he's more likely to get a, a double than Josh Payne. Well, I think double double there was the shot for Josh Payne. Peter Wright certainly would have gone double double in that situation. He blocked some of that treble 20 bed, couldn't find his way through. Peter Wright will look at the bullseye here and should get at least one match dart. Oh my word, what's he doing? Well, it's bullseye now. And he pins it. Yeah, you go your own Peter way, Rock. Peter. A 6-3 win. The world number two ends Josh Payne's campaign at the German Darts Grand Prix. And it will be Snakebite 
versus the St. Alan Tavern in the last 16 tomorrow afternoon. It has not been ideal preparation for Peter Wright, and I think it probably told in the performance. However, he did enough, and that's not always been the case for Peter Wright over these laboured last few weeks. He was excellent in Leverkusen last weekend. He's got a chance in the final day of the German Darts Grand Prix to recapture some of that form and maybe claim another Euro Tour title, what would be his seventh. We've got three more genuine contenders for this crown on the way. It was at the second day of action. The world champion Rob Cross faces Johnny Clayton. Michael Van Gogh in the world number one takes on Steve Lennon. And coming up in a few moments, it's Mensor Sulevic, the Austrian number one, against Danny Noppert as the Champions League winner Sulevic faces the Finder Masters champion for the BDO, Noppi. Peter, that was not easy. I just said you're not wasn't it playing with your normal darts, and I, I could realize that. You were I was, I got them 15 minutes before my game. You know it, <laughs> seriously. Yeah, 15 minutes before my game, I was like a little bit rusty. Uh, but it's, it's really hard playing Josh Payne because I class him as one of you know one of my one of my best friends in in the PDC. So he's a lovely guy. He's up and coming. He's going to be the future of art. So it's very difficult playing him. Amazing, huh? Peter, I was a little bit disappointed. You couldn't wear your Bavarian dress. We have pictures on the screen now from Saturday. Das ist Trachten Angermeyer, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Sieht ja nicht gut aus. <laughs> I like that one with the knife and with Joanne. Yeah. I wanted to wear them underneath and then drop, drop my trousers. <laughs> No, that was fun. Huh? It was amazing how, how fast we were, we were fixed. Yes, uh, I, I just want to thank uh, Ang Angermeyer for a fantastic day and thank you for our outfits. It was absolutely amazing and I hope you're enjoying the darts. Yeah. <laughs> I know they're here. Yeah, I know that. So, Peter, see you tomorrow again. It was good. Congratulations. <laughs> Peter Wright! Ihn sehen wir morgen wieder, die Nummer 2 der Setzliste. Er hatte eigentlich sich überlegt gehabt, die Lederhose unter seiner Hose anzuziehen, also die er nicht ausziehen kann, aber hat dann doch nicht alles so gepasst. <lacht>